quick shout out to my patrons without you guys this wouldn't be possible so thank you thank you thank you hey y'all it's Kay from the literary apothecary and today we're going to be talking about a non-fiction book a book of essays called The Collected Schizophrenia by Esme Wayun Wang. Now, I read this as part of the Mental Health Awareness Month that took place in May. I was part of a live show with Josephine and RJ Gibson um, that happened way back at the beginning of May. And I will link that discussion in the description below because that was such an incredible discussion with Fine and RJ. It was so much fun. So I assigned myself to read this. This is one of the two books that I read for Mental Health Awareness Month. And this book has been on my TBR forever. I first heard of this book when I was writing my MFA thesis on an ancestor that had schizophrenia. And my advisor recommended this book and I really wanted to read it. I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. So I finally, when Fine approached me about Mental Health Awareness Month, I was like, yes, I'm in. I need to read this book. Um, and I am so, so glad that I did. I gave this five out of five stars and I'll talk about that rating in just a minute. This book was the winner of the Grey Wolf Press Nonfiction Prize and a Witting Award. Um, so those are kind of like top nonfiction awards. And through the powerful and affecting essays, Wang takes the readers, us, on her journey through mental illness and diagnoses, stigmas, medication, successes, and failures. Wang writes not only for people like her that are suffering from schizophrenia, but also for those that wish to understand it like me. And these essays were so, so powerful. Um, we had essay, the very first essay was titled Diagnosis. And this was all about the power of finding the right diagnose. So um, Wang went through all of these different years and these different doctors trying to figure out what exactly was wrong with her. She knew there was something off. Um, but she couldn't figure out what it was. Doctors kept saying, well, it's this, it's bipolar disorder, it's this, it's manic depressive disease. Uh, she was getting all these different diagnoses, but none of them were exactly correct. They had a little bit of what she had, but not all of what she had. And she talks about just finding that right diagnosis can make all the difference. And that is not only true for schizophrenia, but also true for any kind of mental illness. Mental illness is so often misdiagnosed that just finding someone that can diagnose you correctly can make a world of difference to someone suffering. Uh, I learned so much through just this book in general. Um, on page 11 of this book in the first essay, Still Diagnosis, um, they meant, she mentions that when schizophrenia was first kind of diagnosed and discovered, it was called dementia praecox. And I knew of this term from my thesis research because my ancestor who had schizophrenia was diagnosed with dementia praecox. And so I read that phrase, those two words, so much doing research for my thesis. Um, and also another thing that I learned there was some more that I learned in just in this first essay. People with schizophrenia are more likely to be born in the winter than summer, which to me is just like mind blowing. Um, of course, not everyone that has schizophrenia was born in the winter, um, but apparently according to studies, the majority of those people that are diagnosed with schizophrenia are born likely to be born in winter than the summer. Um, and I also learned that people with uh, schizophrenia can either go, will go through as while they're like a child in the womb before they're even born, difficult births, obstetrical complications, stressful events, a trauma suffered by the mother while, so while the child's in the womb they're already getting set up for this. Um, 
And so in the next essay, we have Toward a Pathology of the Possessed, which talks about the stigma of schizophrenia. Just like I suffer from epilepsy and um, way back in the 1600s, people often believe that epilepsy, people with epilepsy, especially kids, were possessed by demonic beings. And the same goes true for um, schizophrenia. It, and schizophrenia leads to a permanently damaged brain. Now, I've just recently learned that there is some controversy about p people like me with epilepsy and having damaged brains. I've been told that my brain has been damaged because of all the seizures that I used to have, but there are some, apparently that's a minority now with epilepsy. Um, there is one quote that I pulled out from this essay, which just sums it up so well the stigma of schizophrenia the story of schizophrenia is one with a protagonist the schizophrenic who is first a fine and good vessel with fine and good things inside of it and then becomes misshapen through the ravages of psychosis the vessel becomes prone to being filled with nasty things Finally, the wicked thoughts and behavior that may ensue become inseparable from the person who is now unrecognizable from what they once were. And that's essentially the stigma that people have still to this day with people with schizophrenia. The next essay was titled High Functioning and the um, most important bit that I got out of this essay is that what may seem like high functioning to one disorder is not the same for all disorders. So just because a person with say bipolar disorder seems high functioning does not mean that this same appearance of high functioning will be there for the other dis every other disorder. Um, and then the next essay was really mind boggling it was titled Yale Will Not Save You and this was about how she got kicked out of Yale because essentially because of her schizophrenia. Um, she writes, I'm still trying to figure out what quote okay is, particularly whether there exists a normal version of myself beneath the disorder. To her at this time in her life, all she could see was a schizophrenia because that's all other people would talk about. That's all they could see. Um, and so it's affected the way she's even seen herself. And so, like I mentioned, after two episodes in just one calendar year, she would, Yale expelled her. Um, and apparently this has been kind of a common thing among colleges and universities across the U.S. They're known for poor handling of mentally ill students and especially schizophrenic students. And that's just heartbreaking to me. And then a lot of the rest of the essays talk about hospitalization and whether it's voluntary or involuntary and the pros and cons of hospitalization. And um, we, she has an essay on the Slender Man, um, which was way back, I can't even tell you when because I'll be totally wrong. Maybe I wanna say the 60s. Um, she Basically this essay talks about urban myths and legends like the Le the Slender Man that can lead to hysteria, terror, and death. There was a story of these two girls who brutally murdered their best friend um, and they said the Slender Man told them to. And this had just happened, I believe, right after that movie came out. Um, and it turns out one of the girls had severe schizophrenia and the other one was psychosis on um, borderline psychosis. So that story was just frightening, frightening to read. Talks about the ways that, you know, um, TV and movies can play into delusions. Sometimes her delusions seem so real that she has a hard time distinguishing between what's real and what's a delusion. And her husband, who's been there for her through a lot of this, is the one that has to come in and say, hey, this was just a delusion, this isn't really happening, or this didn't really just happen. So we need to calm down and take deep breaths. Um, but 
TV and movies and especially CGI and special effects plays so much into delusions that it's hard to even when you're sitting in a movie to figure for her to figure out what's real and what's not real because she just falls right into the movie and then that falls into her delusion. And that was just, I had never really thought about that before until I read this, but after I read this, it was just so mind open, opening. And so the last thing that I'll mention on here um, is from the, the essay, La Appel du Vide, and she writes, to build a barrier would be to acknowledge that we do not understand each other, to acknowledge that much of life is lived on the cord, on the far side of the railing, and you know, it's okay. She's writing these essays so that everyone can try to understand it, but everyone is different and it's okay if you don't understand it. Just admit that you don't understand it. Don't try to pretend that you do and then spew out incorrect information. So that was just some of the essays that were in this book of essays. I highly, highly, highly recommend The Collected Schizophrenia. If you want to learn more about mental illness and especially schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, um, highly, highly recommend. Five out of five stars. I only touched on a few of the essays in here, but there's they were all just absolutely fantastic. So. If you read this Collective Schizophrenia before, let me know in the comments below what your favorite essay was in this. Um, if you haven't read the Collective Schizophrenia before, let me know what your recommendations are, what your favorite books that deal with mental illness are because we're, well, by the time you see this, it'll be just finishing with mental health awareness, but when I'm recording this, it's still Mental Health Awareness Month. and. Really, honestly, every month should be Mental Health Awareness Month because I feel like more people suffer from some form of mental illness than don't. So just be aware of that out there. Um, as always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.